Hi, right, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, and I'm not dead yet. Tonight we're going to do the start of, I was going to do this all-inclusive one-shot TIG welding deal on aluminum, but it's such an enormous subject, I, I just thought about it, there's no way. I'm going to have to make it into a multi-parter. So I'm just going to do one sample tonight again. We're limited in time. Mark always has to seem to leave. I work 80 hours a week. He doesn't want to work 80 hours a week. I don't know what's wrong with him. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so we got a sample that uh, one of the students wheeled up. And it was uh, just a piece of scrap hanging around. And... Uh, I cut it in half with a bandsaw. It wasn't sheared. So the joint is, is pretty decent. It's not a perfect joint, but it fits pretty nicely. So my intent on this is after I bandsawed it, I took some 80 sandpaper and sanded the edge of the fuzz off from the, ba from the bandsaw. And then I've given it a little uh, cleaning with the stainless steel brush. So now I'm going to uh, clamp this up the way I usually do. I usually start in the middle of the panel and I'm going to tack it up. This one I'm going to tack without the pulse. I've been pulse tacking but I'm going to do this uh, a method that uh, one of my students from the Netherlands came over, Martin, and uh, he showed me this technique. I'm going to redo that technique. Now the difference is we were using just straight argon, but now I use argon helium exclusively. So I don't know what the results will be. So we'll give it a shot and see what it looks like. And we're gonna, then we're going to torture test it. We'll clean it up and torture test it. I probably won't weld the whole thing, maybe just a por portion of it. But the torture test will be taking it over to the beater bag and hitting it with a ball peen hammer as hard as I can swing the hammer right on the weld to see how that weld holds up. If everything went well, the weld will be as strong as the parent metal. Need one more clamp. There we go. Let me just get a hammer. I can pump that together. One second. So I'll even tack, try to tack without using a rod. I'll have a rod in reserve in case I, a hole opens up or something. But uh, if I can tack without rod, that's what I'll do. So I'm using 1100 rod. This is the Chinese super stiff 3003 allegedly, uh, H14 allegedly, 63,000 stick aluminum. I've come to like it, but it is tough. It wells nice. And I've got a 2% lanthanated rod. I grind it about a quarter of an inch back. After you grind it, you should burn it in. And it, a little micro ball will, will form on the end, and it's pretty stable. When you use thorated, the ball will it'll get larger, it'll get wonky on, you have to clean it up. This will get a little larger after you use it for a while, but it'll hold pretty good too. So that's, I've really switched to the lanthanated, both steel and aluminum. And I, I use this IV hanger here to hold the weight of the cord. So I'm going to try to do some TIG tacks here. With no pulse, I'm going to tack this up and then we'll weld it up. You can see that's hop skipping and jumping along really nicely. Um, my heat is at 76 amps. It might be a little strong. I could back it off, but I'm just cracking the pedal too. You want to make sure the metal is flush, that's super important. On aluminum it's a little forgiving, on steel it's not. If it goes off on steel it's a pain. The 
the vice grips give me a nice uh, rest for my arm so I can control better. Tonight I don't have time, but in the uh, second and maybe the third video on the TIG welding of the aluminum, I'll call out all the settings I do, and uh, you can maybe try that. There's so many variables on today's inverted welders with settings. There's uh, at least a half a dozen or more settings, so it can get super confusing. Not only do you have to have the eyesight and the hand coordination, but all the settings, uh, the foot pedal control. And after I get the aluminum TIG welding, on the agenda will be, we'll do some steel TIG welding eventually. And uh, this is all sheet, aluminum sheet, steel sheet. And uh, a lot of my students, before they come to my class, will take a welding class at a community college or something like that. Uh, that's all well and good for welding structural stuff, but generally they will not weld thin sheet metals because a lot of those welders, the instructors, do not know how to properly weld uh, thin sheet metal. A little bit of gap was forming over there and it opened up. I had to let that little rod right there. So now I got this side all tacked up. Um, the tacks came through, but they're not really welded. You could break this off very easily. There's no strength in those. So what we're going to do now is just give it a quick little. wire brush treatment. Now I wanted to do a shaped part because generally if you do uh, just uh, sheared coupons what happens is they'll lift up like this. Now this didn't lift up um, so that, that'll uh, stay pretty stable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Martin's technique of welding the backside first, which, as he explained, uh, it doesn't have any strength component to the weld. All it's doing is closing the back door to keep your oxygen, oxygen is the enemy, keep the oxygen off of the weld zone. So here we go. I'm going to just run that. And we'll see how good. I, I've got it set at 76 amps. It might be a little too high, so I might have to stop and lower it. We'll see. But if your amps are high, you can use that higher amperage, but your, your dwell time is faster. You've got to move faster. Um, the object is to uh, get a lot of heat into the panel without blowing a hole into it and without slumping the metal too much on the other side. So we'll see. What, I'll do a little bit and see what happens here. All right, it's going pretty sweet. So you, Mark can get a close-up of that. 
you can see we got a little bit of drop through on the other side but that's a super clean weld and very hot with that uh, helium. The helium makes it a little hotter. We'll do the same thing with just the argon and we'll compare the results. So there you go. That backside, you saw that that was pretty quick when you're doing it that uh, fusion method. It's fast. So I got the back side done. Now I'm going to do the front side. The front side will probably be as fast. The question is, after we planish it out, will there be undercuts? Most likely there probably will be, which you can go in and fill with a little rod here and there. We're not going to do that. We don't care about the aesthetic so much on this example. We want to see the strength element and what kind of results we're getting just for doing this quick with this type of method. And this is just one of many, many different types of methods you can use. And it, and it literally can spend weeks experimenting to find what works best for you, both in your welder, your settings, uh, your conditions of your eyesight, and your hand-eye coordination. Uh, all that comes into play. It's actually, you know, there's so many variables. It's this incredibly complicated problem, but you can't get scared by it. It's just a piece of of tungsten throwing off electron stream which is, is just nothing more than electric flame it's exactly the same as a gas torch but it's electric flame and you're controlling that electric flame but you don't have to have any flux so here we're going to run this one So there's the top side, and no rod was added, and we got a lot of drop through here now on the back side. If you look at this weld on the back side, it is, the metal is shiny clean, it is beautiful. Now I suspect what's going to happen here, I had probably a little bit too much amperage, I was a really hot weld. Hopefully we can put this in the planishing hammer and cold forge that extra drop through material up to the top and then we won't have as many uh, divots or any problems on the top. But uh, then we'll do the torture test. So I want to let that cool down for a few minutes. So we'll come back in a few minutes. I, I don't want a water blast. So I'm going to let it just air cool. And uh, then we'll come back. All right, Mark is severely pressed for time. So I decided to use the power hammer instead of the planishing hammer. I'm going to crush this all in. And then we're going to do the torture test on it. So here we go. It actually looks pretty good. It crushed in nice. Back side's got a little bit of edge on it, but the top side, it looks pretty decent. Now we'll run it in the wheel just for a minute and we'll torture test it. Give it some heavy pressure. The, the surface is a little bit of undercut over here. Not bad, altogether all pretty nice. So now we'll do it the torture test with the ball peen hammer. All right, now we see what we got. We have a ball peen hammer, an old beat up ball peen hammer. We got a beater bag. And we'll start hitting right on the weld. It fatigue cracked on the side of the weld, on this one right here. Not on the weld, on the side of the weld. Let's try it some more here. Mm. 
same thing. Started the fatigue crack right there. So effectively what you have here is the weld zone is as strong as the parent metal. So that's one way of welding aluminum with a TIG welder. We're going to explore as many ways as possible in the next coming uh, weeks. Tomorrow maybe we'll do another one. Thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper and we're going to have some exciting videos coming up. Keep the comments coming and subscribe, tell a friend. We want to try to build the channel. Thanks a lot.